Here's a final uh, comparison of really three kinds of geometry. Secretly, there's three, been three kinds of geometry that we've been comparing. I've been very explicit about um, developing Euclidean geometry, starting from the dot product, and then in parallel, developing Minkowski geometry, starting from the Minkowski scalar product. And here I have pictures of a Euclidean coordinate system in green and then a, another Euclidean, a rot rotated coordinate system in red. And so one way to describe Euclidean geometry, it's the kind of geometry where that kind of transformation is legal or that these kinds of coordinates are preferred. Um, and I certainly didn't start out talking about coordinates, but it's a good picture to summarize it. Uh, Minkowski geometry here, the green is a, a legal grid and the red is another legal grid. And so the kinds of transformations that are legal are the Lorentz transformations. And implicitly, I've also been comparing things to Newtonian physics and what's called Galilean relativity. Relativity is, doesn't something, isn't something that started with, with Einstein. It's a special relativity that's linked to Minkowski geometry is what really Einstein did. Um, everybody knew, at least implicitly, but didn't really have, a, I think, a strong enough feeling for how important it was. Uh, they, had a strong, they had a feeling for Galilean relativity which is the fact that you can describe physics from, from the perspective of the station master or the, the train conductor, and they're going to see some things that are different, but some things should seem the same. Um, as a kind of geometry, what it is, is you can describe Newtonian physics in terms of space-time. Um, that's not something that's, again, that's not something that's unique to Einstein. You can describe space-time, you can have it put space-time diagrams in Newtonian mechanics, no problem. But what's different about it is that um, time is an absolute that everybody's supposed to agree on. So that's why you see in this picture the green grid is somebody's idea of space and time coordinates, x and t. And then a moving observer is going to have a different idea of what, for example, x prime equals 0 is. So that's going to be a tis t prime axis like right here. And that's going to be his x prime equals 0, because according to him, he's not moving, just like we've seen in, in uh, special relativity. But what they aren't going to disagree on, what they are going to agree on, is they're going to have the same x axis and the same x equal, or sorry, the same t equals 0. So this is t equals 0, t equals 1, t equals 2. All those measurements of time, which form the horizontal um, parts of the grid, are going to be the same. Newton thinks there's such a thing as absolute time. So let's think about this one, once again to kind of get ourselves more used to this picture, which is really what's going on. Um, in the Euclidean framework, when you rotate one axis, the other axis has to rotate along with it. And it rotates in the way where you're familiar with with geometry, familiar, yeah, with geo in, in terms of Euclidean geometry. In Minkowski geometry, when one axis, let's say the x-axis, rotates up to be an x-prime axis, the other axis does have to do something to go with it. It's just a little bit weird that it has to go toward it in the way that preserves the Minkowski scalar product. I claim that the Newtonian geometry, if you want to think of it as a kind of geometry, is really weirder even than this one. Because here, you've changed the t-axis to be a new t-prime axis. Here's the world line of somebody who's um, just sitting there. Here's the world line of somebody who's moving by him, but according to him, he's not moving. So that's his t prime axis. And yet the other axis, the other grid lines, don't change at all. And I think that's you know kind of a weird thing. There's nothing uh, illogical or contradictory about it. But I think it's neat to see that as a comparison and to think, OK, I, I've, I've been thinking this is pretty weird, and it's hard to get used to as a kind of geometry. That's what I'm more familiar with. But this is just silly. Why aren't the other axes moving at all? Okay, we can we can write down equate. We can compare the equations as well if we want to. We know the rotation equations here, the matrix. So we have like x prime y prime equals it was cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta times x y. And so there's the transformation there. In the Minkowski case, we had, we used t, but that, that's not the important thing, x prime t prime, let's put it down here. We had a couple ways of expressing it. The way I like to do it is with the uh, alphas, but we can also do it as gamma, oh, times 
times x well, x t, or gamma one v v one times x t. And then <coughs> the Newtonian world, or the Galilean transformations, which we implicitly use all the time, without really even thinking about it or having a name for it, is that x and t, <coughs> well, as x prime t prime rather. The t has to stay, t prime has to equal t, so the bottom row has to just be 0, 1, okay? And so that's just really simple. And then x prime is, to figure out the position according to a moving observer, you figure out the position according to the other observer, that's just going to be 1 times x, and then you add in velocity times time. Um, so the v comes in here. So this just says x prime is x plus vt. If I know the position according to the station master, then I have to add in how far how far have I gone since our coordinates matched up, or how yeah how long was it since my coordinates matched up times the velocity. That's the relative uh, position. X prime minus x is how far you've moved, how far you've gotten out of sync in that time. So this is a nice simple matrix, but it's not nearly as symmetrical as these examples, and that's. Uh, because corresponding to the geometric kind of weirdness that one of the sets of, uh, of grid lines is moving and the other set doesn't move. So I think that's a kind of a nice place to, uh, to finish up, thinking of Newtonian space-time as a kind of geometry that's just as weird or really weirder than the Minkowski geometry if we think of it from the geometric point of view. Now, of course, we also want to think of it physically, um, and that can be more challenging. But I just love always coming back to the geometry as well.